please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, well, that's the SGX Nifty up 30 points. Uh, the Hang Seng market is getting very volatile. It started with the red, almost went into the green and now is once again in the red. In fact, if we can have just the intraday chart on Hang Seng, that will be very interesting and very telling because the problem for emerging markets uh, of late has been that they have been underperforming the developed market. So uh, let's just uh, pull out the intraday chart on Hang Seng because it, 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 it's important uh, the way it's uh, moving. Every time it's rallying, there's all a bit of a, all highs are getting sold. Uh, uh, let's see how it pans out today. Ashwini Gujarat, Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar join us. Good morning. Uh, Ashwani, you, you, you were saying yesterday about that 80-point uh, nifty move and 240-point bank nifty move from the low point that it was just shorts booking profit and don't, don't read too much into that. Uh, but uh, what about today, especially if we have a 30-35-point gap up? Well, good morning. And uh, my advice is don't be cute. Mm. Why? Because the, the yesterday was profit booking of shorts. Now, what I want to see is today, everybody in the morning gets long, crude is down, this is down, that is up, and the market fails to follow through. Because, you know, that is when where fresh shots will come in. So, basically, 30, 40 point gap up, maybe, hmm. and then we see what happens. Once, you know, you start taking out yesterday's low, and, you know, uh, once uh, you are higher, it's easier to fall. So my sense would be that uh, let the market have fun for two hours, but uh, it won't be so easy. You can see what's happening to Asia. So nothing is out of the wood. Nothing has changed. Crude is down one dollar. That is it. Once rupee starts to break seventy-two, maybe it does. You know your game is up. So uh, fresh selling will happen if this was a nothing uh, situation. Then you know entire global markets and the kind of you know crisis sort of crisis that we are seeing. That wouldn't be there. Markets don't go up when there is so much uncertainty. Okay. Well, that uh, appears to be the message that's coming even from the uh, Hong Kong market right now. But uh, Ashwini, therefore, it's a no trade zone you're seeing? Not no trade, but, uh, you know, let the market go up. The moment you start getting those large red bars again, just climb on board. And because people are long from yesterday, maybe some in the morning today, that way the fall will be harder. So uh, I'm okay with, you know, things going up 100 points, 150 points on Bank Nifty and falling from there. On a net basis, whether or not we make a fresh low, uh, that's besides the point. But uh, these rallies, you have to go short on. People are trapped. The way market fell, how many people would have gotten out? So this is the first rally which will test, uh, you know, the shorts conviction. I think they've made good enough money and uh, you, you have to look for the shorts coming back at higher levels. Okay, well, uh, Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar are also with us. Uh, Sudarshan, hi, good morning. It's now what, a 260-point fall that we've seen on the Nifty from uh, the highs in at the end of August. Um, do you get a sense that lower lows are coming and what would the new uh, range for the Nifty be, the floor and the ceiling? Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, well, uh, I have that sense that more lows are coming. Uh, September should be a weak month and we should end much lower. Now, in between, uh, markets will go up. It's not a one-way street ever, and especially because the larger trend is up. We are in a bull market, so there will be sharp, vicious rallies like the one we saw yesterday afternoon and which would continue today. Our first target for the Nifty was 11,400. I did not think it would reach in one day, but it did that. So all that has happened is that a short-term low is in place. That means nothing except that markets can now chop around and consolidate at current levels. Once the consolidation is complete, the market will tell us whether it eventually wants to break on the upside. At this point, my conviction is that we will break on the downside, break the lows and move lower. So that's the view for the day also. If the Nifty cash, if the futures Nifty, I'm sorry, the cash Nifty goes towards 11,540, that was yesterday's high, that would be a perfect go short trade buy puts around that level and hold on for a few days. So it's a sell on rallies market for me. Okay, sell on rallies market for uh, Sudarshan as well. Uh, Mitesh, good morning. Uh, your thoughts on the indices? Uh, good morning. So I think, uh, you know, I spoke about uh, maybe one leg of the decline is over, but uh, 
uh, we're not looking at starting an uptrend indicator setup still remains weak. So while we would have made a temporary low around the 11,400 mark, my sense is that uh, close to about 11,550, 580 zones, strong supply will emerge. So I think next few days could be more choppy. We already have, at, uh, have had an 80 point bounce back on the Nifty and possibly 30, 35 points today in the morning. I think around 11,550, I would look at some kind of shorting opportunities with a stop above 11,580. And next few days to me look like choppy, but we might just be in this 150, 180 point kind of range. Okay. With that, let's uh, come to the stocks. Uh, Ashwini, what are you trading? See, since uh, early morning could be a bit positive, so Alliance Infra is a buy with a stop of 474, target of 500. JSW Steel is a buy with a stop of 394, target of 412. Bata is a buy with a stop of 1045, target of 1080. And Idea is a sell with a stop of 50, target of 42. And Shriram Transport is a sell with a stop of 12.35, target of 12.30. Okay, three okay. buys and two sells in Ashwini's list. Uh, uh, Sudarshan, good morning. What are you trading? Almost the same. <laughs> uh, good looking for mid caps which are outperforming. Uh, Vedant is a buy. Vedant is a very attractive chart, similar to Hindalco and Hindustan Zinc, Hind Zinc. And it's a positional buy. I mean, you could it could bug the trend, not so easily, but still. But for today, Vedant is a buy. UBL from the FMCG pack is a buy. This is something that's going to go up no matter what happens, especially when the markets fall. Mm. So that's the second. And pharma is a, my favorite sector. DV's lab is a buy for the day. You know, for the buying, be very careful if you are trading intraday. Then if you sense any weakness, take whatever profits you get. But the three, three stocks are good enough for a rally, for a rally if the markets consolidate. I have two short sales, Shidam Transport Finance. Uh, this has come in my list often. There is some problem there. That's It's now in a mini bear market of its own. And Tata Communications, new 52-week lows yesterday, another problem stock. Okay. Oh. Well, uh, Mitesh, what about you? What are the stocks that you're looking to buy or sell now? Yeah, so I also have a mix of buy and sell. Uh, Apollo Hospitals comes on the buy list. It's corrected a bit uh, now close to important support areas. So keep a stop at 11.17. Look for a bounce to about 11.70 odd zone. Uh, Tata Motors, uh, the indicator setup looks like uh, positive, but the stock needs to get past this 271, 271 half zone. So I would keep a trigger at 272. If it crosses that, go along with the stop at 265 for targets of 288. Uh, and the final buy call is on KPIT where uh, there's continuation movement happening on the upside. So buy with a stop at 303 for targets of 322. I also have two sell calls. Hero Motors, the indicator setup is negative. Uh, that's a sell with a stop at 3180 for targets of 3070. And Infratil as well, the candlestick pattern yesterday was quite negative. So sell with a stop at 280, look for declines to about levels of 252. Okay. Gentlemen, uh, we're going to come back to you with lots more uh, questions. But for the moment, let's get some fundamental analysis going on FMCG stocks, personal product stocks like Hindustan Unilever, Nestle, Britannia, Jubilant Food, Godrej Consumer. Uh, they've all been under pressure. Some of them, uh, that, uh, uh, like uh, Nestle and HUL, have fallen 10% in September so far. Uh, what's suddenly gone wrong with these? Is it only valuations? Uh, Abnish Roy of ADY Securities joins us on the phone line. Good morning, Abnish. Uh, well, uh, you know, many of them, like for instance, Darbar, even Hindustan Unilever, reported very good volume growth. Uh, in spite of it, do you think they are overpriced? So I think uh, clearly some uh, level of froth had uh, built up in the sector. Uh, the Q1 uh, volume growth uh, was uh, extrapolated and uh, the important thing is to look at uh, from a two-year uh, time frame. Mm. Uh, that's the key number. So I think uh, volume growth from here on will uh, uh, come back to that normalized level of around 4 to 8 percent two-year uh, volume growth. Uh, that's the number we should look at. Uh, but clearly, I think a uh, lot of uh, positives still remain. Mm. Uh, last 10 years, if you see, FMCG sector always has had uh, concerns on valuation. Uh, correction happens and then the sector comes back very strongly. Uh, in terms of outlook, I think uh, things are absolutely fine. So if you see, uh, the risk of uh, Patanjali as a big disruption uh, two years back versus now, it has uh, reduced significantly. Mm. Patanjali has expanded the market. In terms of rural, we are seeing recovery. It's election year. Monsoon also has been reasonably okay. Uh, so I think uh, now with this 10, 20 percent correction, a uh, lot of that uh, froth has now gone. Uh, maybe 4, 5 percent correction is some of the more expensive names like uh, Unilever, Nestle can still happen. Uh, but uh, currently our topics will be essentially uh, 
डाबर एंड आई टी सी इन द कंज्यूमर स्टेपल एंड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शनरी वी लाइक जूबल एंड फूड ओके डाबर आई टी सी एंड जूबल एंड फूड आर टॉपिक सो अवनीश यू नो इवन ऑल ऑफ दीज कंपनी ड्यूरिंग द क्यू आर नंबर टोल्ड अस अबाउट हाउ वॉल्यूम ग्रोथ इज लुकिंग क्वाइट गो रूरल ग्रोथ हेज पिक्ट अप सो इफ दिस इज जस्ट अ टेम्पररी फॉल दैट वी आर सींग और सॉट ऑफ यू नो सम लेवल ऑफ फ्रॉड दैट्स कमिंग ऑफ Uh, do you think this is a good time for long term investors to be buying into these names or you think you can get better levels say over the next 3 to 6 months no i think uh, for uh, long term investment from a 1 to 2 years perspective uh, this is a good time to start buying into quality names uh, if you see in terms of global risk trade wars currency uh, volatility india risk in terms of political fmcg continues to remain one of the best sectors from a defensive uh, uh, point of view in terms of growth actually if you see dabar in fact highlighted uh, in q1 the recovery is there and when we met uh, in q2 he said that uh, the buoyancy and the confidence has increased uh, further so it will be a bit company specific in case of dabar because they are doing a lot of the right uh, tick mark in terms of strategy but i think yes uh, clearly uh, the froth uh, is uh, com- coming uh, to an end maybe 3 4% correction in the two three stocks which i highlighted uh, but yes uh, good time to uh, invest back uh, invest back in what only in dabar uh, dabar itc Uh, and uh, jubilant foods uh, in hl and nestle if uh, maybe uh, that 4 5% correction uh, if that happens uh, i think th- those stocks are also uh, looking quite good uh, because mm. uh, in terms of innovation this will be a record year uh, we are seeing uh, market share gains for lot of these companies patanjali risk is far far lower and uh, the category has also expanded so yes uh, even hl nestle uh, after that 4 5% correction further i think uh, those sure. also will be very good names okay thanks a lot for joining us Nish and giving us your view. So some level of froth has built up, but no, uh, the the trend has not changed for the FMCG sector, and the outlook is still positive. Let's discuss that big uh, acquisition. Aurobindo Pharma has announced that it will acquire the commercial operations and three manufacturing units in the US from Sandoz. Now uh, the acquired business has sales worth almost 1.2 billion dollars, and Aurobindo would pay 900 million dollars in cash up front. Uh, Nimish Mehta of Research Delta Advisors joins on the phone line to talk about. that nimesh good morning you know aurobindo will need to add more debt perhaps to the tune of almost 900 million dollars would this be a concern for you or would you be optimistic with this new acquisition no this uh, you know the increase in debt is clearly a concern given that uh, you know aurobindo's uh, debt management was not very effective having said that uh, you know these kind of acquisition they have done in the past only thing is uh, they were, i mean when i say these kind of acquisition i'm talking about the acquisition strategy so what i understand here and what i assume here is that they will try to transfer products to india and thereby make it more cost effective and uh, turn around you know more profitable so that that would uh, largely be the strategy and that they have done it earlier with uh, acquisitions like actavis europe and other acquisitions so to that extent uh, this seems to be in that line but yes valuation and uh, the amount of money that is paid leave little room for um you know any error here okay so basically you're not changing your uh, forecasts or are you actually lowering uh, the forecast because of the potential impact on uh, finance costs yes so uh, i won't i mean uh, again we don't know the profitability of the business that is being yes. acquired yeah. but uh, but assuming that you know at the current level of profitability it may not be a good acquisition um mm-hmm. the and that is why probably sandals would have you know divested that uh, higher that unit uh, but armindo must be hoping to kind of increase the profitability from wherever it is by by transferring the products and that is what they've done with other acquisitions in the past as well and that has done well for them so what okay. i'm trying to say is that yeah if we if we kind of assume that the new profit that we are talking about for armindo uh you know is uh, is the is the way going forward mm. but you know the kind of valuation we have paid there is little room for error so if the calculation in that goes little bit here and there and there might be problem that is my general sense of this it's difficult to say without knowing the numbers so are you negative on the stock no we are not negative on the stock okay. given that uh, it has yeah the cleanest record in fta it has been able to grow the us business and it is also actually a beneficiary of the uh you know in a way i won't say the pricing pressure but the kind of consolidation we are seeing so a lot of the business that is being uh, discontinued by teva and sandals has been going to urbindo 
Uh, and that is actually propelling the US business. So to that extent, they were actually able to capture those business and by this acquisition, I think they are doing the same thing. Okay. So, yeah, well poised that way. All right. Thanks a lot for giving us your quick take, Nimish. Uh, that's the word coming in from Research Delta Advisors. They say that there is some amount of concern on the debt front because Aurobindo will have to take uh, debt to the tune of $900 million to fund this acquisition. Uh, but they're optimistic on the stock. Uh, let's take a short break. Up next, Chandan Taparia of Motila Roswal Securities will join in with some FNO trades. Also, Devin Choksi will be with us in just a bit. Stay tuned. Well, uh, Shre Infrastructure released their earnings last evening. The numbers looked good on a year-on-year -year comparison owing to a low base. But compared to last quarter, the picture isn't so rosy. Disbursements are down 10%, uh, loan growth is up 5% and net income has risen just 3.5% from the previous quarter. Sunil Kanoria, the Vice Chairman of Shre Infra, joins on the phone line to talk about that. Um, Mr. Kanoria, good morning. Uh, before I ask you about your earnings, I just want to know what happened with uh, Mr. Samir Sani's resignation. I mean, he was appointed, you know, not even two years back in November 2016. Already the resignation has come through. What was the reason behind it? No, no, no. He basically, he has moved out from Shre Infra here as a CEO okay. to basically focus on our fund business out of Singapore. Okay. So he was always based in Singapore and he was shuttling and he was helping us here too. But as the fund, my business, our fund business is building up, mm. so he would be more focusing there. So he's still within the group, mm. uh, but uh, out of Singapore, developing our fund business and uh, international resource mobilization, which is very critical for the company, for the group. But have you put in a successor already? Well, uh, Bala uh, has joined the board. He is our group advisor and we've had the teams. Uh, as it is, as you know, in Shrey Infra, our strategy is not to grow the book substantially. So therefore, we found that uh, by being there, uh, the team here, and keep focus on the fund business and doing business more on the funds, we do not need a very uh, senior resource here at the moment. Oh. You don't want to grow your book. You don't want an NBFC business, is it? No, no, no. I never said that. Sorry. I said that at the moment, the infrastructure, there are two parts of our business. Okay. One is the infrastructure financing business and our equipment financing business. Okay. The equipment oh. financing business is doing very well, mm -hmm. growing strong, and the focus is there. Mm -hmm. We have a CEO, we have a team there, and they've been uh, consistent. Uh, we have a CEO there for over 22 years with the group. So okay. the business is strong here. At the infrastructure side, okay. as we have always said in the past couple of years, now last three years, the overall infrastructure sector is not good. Okay. And we have been going, growing very slow. Mr. So that's uh, the reason. Mr. Kanoria, good morning. Uh, you know, what about the equipment finance uh, IPO? What's the, you know, uh, what's the status of that? We are hoping to get the SEBI approval any day. Mm. Uh, that's what the feedback we have from the bankers and uh, SEBI. So as soon as that happens, we will uh, go in for the market, yeah, but for the it, capital. It, it shouldn't have taken this long. Uh, that's, that's well, the they, well, that's with the regulators. So we can't say anything. No, but is there, any, only, is, there, is there any issue that the SEBI is concerned whatever with? Feedback we have, whatever feedback we have received from SEBI, there is nothing. In, no this, in this calendar year, can we expect it? We are hopeful. Okay, okay. within 2018 itself, right. So uh, in your conversation, the, uh, did they say why they are delaying it? Pardon? In your conversation. Well, regulators don't it? say. They okay. just say if they had query, they kept on having queries. Now there's no more queries okay. for the last two weeks. Okay. So, and they've said that we are processing it. Uh, we will take it and let okay. you know. Okay, but you are confident that it will happen this year? We are confident. Okay. What about disbursements? Uh, they've fallen actually 10% if you look at it on a quarter on quarter basis. What kind of trends can we expect going ahead? Well, it's not actually dropped. Uh, March always is a kind of a peak and then it uh, slows down in April because people who buy, they buy assets in March before 31st and then April is a little slow month. The overall business in the marketplace and for us also has been strong. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kanuria, we don't In the have... equipment business. Ah, okay. I get your point, sir. Uh, I wanted some data on your gross NPAs and, uh, uh, you know, since it is in the S, whether you have stage three loans uh, that you may have declared. Yeah, we have. Uh, so, therefore, that's one of the reasons why my ROEs and all also have improved because uh, in Sri Infra, we have, uh, uh, with this India provision, we have uh, cleared our past challenges, which was then the overall infra, and we have been prudent to uh, provide a lot more than what uh, 
was there under the RBI guidelines, mm. uh, and uh, that has also resulted in my reduction in the uh, my net worth uh, by I think around fourteen hundred crores okay. overall. And uh, as a result, uh, we at least we are past the pass. And okay. we hope now the future would be better and stronger. But if you could just share the number, what exactly is the GNPA percentage or stage three loan percentage? Stage three loan, I think, is in the infra business. Is I don't have the numbers okay. exactly with me now, okay. uh, mm. but because it's both are separate, mm -hmm. uh, it will be best my team would uh, share that. Okay. I would not like to comment because we just completed our board meeting date last night oh, evening. Sure. How do you see the margins pan out given the way the interest rates are shaping up? You see, in our business, if you look at last 10 years also, our spread broadly has remained the same. Uh, we in all our loans are we are able to pass on our interest rate. We have a floating uh, interest rate regime, so therefore, in case of a continuous increase, we pass on the interest rate hike uh, to the customer. So therefore, we believe our margins should remain the same. Okay. Our last ten years of experience has shown that. Okay, all right, uh, Mr. Kanoria, pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, uh, there's one more issue that we need to discuss. There was, uh, uh, it looks like there could be some hope for FPI, Foreign Portfolio Investment Managers of Indian Origin. Remember the press conference they had because the SEBI circular makes life difficult for them. Surabhi is joining in with the latest that came from the regulator late yesterday evening in a circular. Uh, Surabhi, what are the changes they have made? Well, no changes just yet, Lata, but there is a ray of hope. I mean, this war of words has been really escalating between uh, this set of asset managers who are of Indian origin and the market regulator. Uh, remember, just a day back, the market regulator said that it is preposterous to claim that $75 billion worth of investment will flow out of the market because of the circular. Now, yesterday, there's a bit of a climb down from SEBI. Uh, all they've said really is that we will take a holistic view of the situation. The regulator says that the HR Khan panel, which has been anyway set up, uh, that panel has heard all the stakeholders and the market regulator is awaiting this panel's recommendations. And SEBI says it's also in touch with the finance ministry. Uh, so therefore, a final ruling is going to be taken uh, in a holistic manner mm -hmm. in a short time. Okay. Uh, it doesn't tell us anything else. It's just raising the hope that maybe there'll be some tweaking that uh, this matter will come to an amicable resolution. Okay, I actually, uh, thanks a lot for that, Surabhi. I reached out to Sebi sources and uh, actually they feel that they're being blamed for something they didn't want. They, uh, Sebi always thought that their KYC norms uh, and uh, uh, the way in which they've dealt with participatory notes are all enough to prevent round tripping. Mm. But the AP Shah Committee on uh, uh, Control of Black Money was not satisfied. You know, they've, uh, the AP Shah Committee has made recommendations across the board to all regulators, to tax authorities, to RBI, to Sebi. And there was a lot of to and fro between SEBI and uh, the AP Shah Committee. The uh, Shah Committee was pretty, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, insistent mm. that there is a possibility of uh, round tripping in this uh, particular uh, uh, window, mm. uh, the FPIs uh, of Indian origin, and therefore they asked for these controls. Sure. So, so in a way, SEBI uh, says that uh, uh, you know uh, there is something on both sides. So, Lata, I just wanted to say, since you mentioned this point, uh, given all the feedback that I've been getting from some of these asset managers, they insist that they have no problem with any future further disclosures. Anything additional the regulator requires for KYC, even for pro proving beneficial ownership, they have no problem di no. disclosing more. It's just that question of let, let, let us manage, despite the fact that we're Indian. That, no, that seems to be a so, Ruby, I'm not standing up for anybody. No, no, I, I'm just saying that I. this was Sebi sauce. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, we'll yeah. wait for, to hear from the yeah. regulator on yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, let's move over to Chandan Taparia now of Mutira Loswal Securities who has been waiting by. Uh, good morning, Chandan. Uh, what are your strategies today? Yes, uh, very good morning. Uh, market has seen the selling pressure from higher levels after breaking 11,620. Uh, however, we have seen recovery from the lows and volatility yesterday fell down even after the market decline. So some, boat, some about consolidation could be seen in the market with support of 11,400 zone. But again, the stock specific theme is likely to be with IT Pharma and selective bitten down counter. So first it is buy on mine tree. We have seen momentum in most of the IT counter longs are being built and depreciating rupees also supporting this entire sector. So mine tree has given a breakout. We have seen open interest addition of around 9 to 10% in last trading session with surge in the trading and the volume activity. The stock is trading at lifetime high territory and all set to head to us 1200 to 12, 12 levels. So we are recommending to buy with the stop loss of 1130 level. 
Second trade is on Sun Pharma. The stock is continuously making higher tops, higher bottom formation supports are gradually shifting higher. Decline is being bought in the counter with put tracking activity. So here we are expecting a move to our 680, 685 kind of level. So one can go with the bull call spread by buying 660 call, selling one lot of 680 call. In the entire spread one has to pay the 8 rupees, keep the spread stop loss of 3 rupees and this spread can go to 17 rupees. So almost 1 is to 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1.8 risk reward ratio and expecting overall Sun Pharma to move on higher side. One more option trade that is on the Yes Bank. As I said that uh, some bitten down stock might be uh, providing the better support and the bargain hunting. Yes Bank has recently fallen from 400 to 333, 35 kind of zone and now finding some support at the lower bend and negating the lower top, lower bottom formation on the daily scale. Yesterday it formed a bullish engulfing pattern so some sort of relief or bounce back could be seen in the counter to us 365, 370. So one can go with the bull call spread by buying one lot of 350 call, selling 370 call. Here one has to pay the premium of five and a half, keep spread stop loss of two and this spread can move to us 12 rupees. So overall positive on this mind tree Sun Pharma and expecting the bounce back move in Yes Bank as well. Okay, Chandan, thanks a lot for joining us and you have a good trading day. We have about four minutes left for the pre-opening rates to kick in. So let's do one thing. Let's take a short break. On the other side of the break, we'll get more guests to tell us how to approach the trading day and we'll get the pre-market rates in as well.